Today's book is A Place to, to land. land. Is this going to be good? Yeah. Give me, give, me, give me some fives and get it going. Fives and get it going. Ah. Give, give yourself a high five. Give myself a high five to get it going. A Look place. Like this. Like that? Did it do good? A place to land. This book is going to be jamming, I think. <clears throat> a place to land. A place to live. Martin Luther King Jr. was once asked if the hardest part of preaching was knowing where to begin. No, he said. The hardest part is knowing where to end. It's terrible to be circling up there without a place to land. Look at that. That's a cool picture. But on August 27th, the night before the 1963 March on Washington, the strong and steady voice of the civil rights movement wasn't sure what to say or how to say it. So Martin did what great people do. He asked for guidance, not from above, at least not at first. In the lobby of the Willard Hotel where Abraham Lincoln once stood, a meeting of the minds took place. Look, I think they're having a meeting. Everybody's talking and taking turns. Daddy, remember Miss Lee Copeland? Yeah, I remember Miss Lee Copeland. Yeah, and she had five brothers. Yes, Miss Lee Copeland. Five she has five siblings. Five siblings. Okay, I'll keep going. You have to preach, said Reverend Ralph Abernathy. Most of the folks coming tomorrow are coming to hear you preach. Wyatt T. Walker agreed, but added, don't use those lines about I have a dream. You have used it too many times already. They are arrested who organized the march, want to hear about jobs, 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 and more jobs, not dreams or scripture. Clarence Jones, one of Martin's Wait speech writers. A Yes, even Martin has speech writers. Wait, where's Martin Luther King? You know what? I don't think he's on this page. These are all of his friends and his advisors and his helpers. Uh... <clears throat> Suggested a marvelous metaphor, a, me a fresh metaphor one never heard before. A bad check. It meant the time had come for America Wait, to make... Wait, Daddy, what are bad checks? A bad check is like when you write a piece of paper for your bank account and then it doesn't work because you don't have a lot of money. I like that. All right, I'll explain some more later. Okay. It meant the time had come for America to make good on her promises of equality and pay up for her citizens of color had grown weary, frustrated, angry for justice long overdue. What? Reverend, Ralph, Reverend Walter Fauntleroy agreed. Whatever you do, Keep that in there. Oh, Duke is kind of like Duke Ellington. Yeah, that is like yeah, that is like Duke Who Ellington. Who is that? Duke Ellington is a musician. We can listen to some of his music if you want to. Okay. For two hours, while these learned <gasps> men, King. oh, he's in the middle, raised their voices and pointed their fingers. Martin remained still. Part of his greatness, he knew the importance of listening. Are you a good listener? Man, you a good listener? Okay. It grew late. With a long night of writing still to come, Martin stood and excused himself. I am going upstairs to my room to counsel with my Lord, he said. I will see you all tomorrow. His advisors fell silent, stunned, unsure if Martin would use any of the ideas in his speech the next day. Man, he has to give a big speech. Of what? He's got to give a big speech the next day. Of what? Um, well, we're going to keep reading and find out. Okay. Until tomorrow, then they mumbled and retreated off to bed. Now what? Upstairs, alone in his suite, surrounded by rough drafts and scribbled notes on yellow legal pads, Martin saw... Wait, are these yellow legal pads? That's a yellow sheet of paper, yeah. Yellow legal is like a notebook, but it's kind of like yellow. Wait, we have one of these. You have one of those maybe in Mommy's office? Uh-huh, we have them. Martin saw Rosa, Fannie Lou, Emmett, Megger, the children of Birmingham, and so many other. Their faces seared into his memory. That's where you, where you Wait, remember. Wait, where's I like this one because of the hair and stuff. Yeah, she's really pretty. There's um, a lot of pretty. Let me do... Heroes all chased by snarling police dogs, knocked off their feet by high-pressure water jets, arrested, beaten, shot, and hung, shocked, and poked by cattle prods. Their homes, schools, and churches burned and bombed. They were not being very nice to them at all. Who was? The other people. Wait, what 
other people. The other people in the country that were being really mean to them. To who? Being mean to the African Americans, to the black people. These black people? Yeah, those black people. Back then they weren't very nice to each other. Midnight, writing, rewriting, rephrasing, rehearsing the lines out loud to an audience of four walls, changing the pacing, stretching the vowels, dividing words into syllables, and creating inner rhymes and alliterations. Alliterations is like rhyming. It was like poetry, said Andrew Young, the soft-spoken pastor who counseled Martin throughout the night. Words crossed out three, four times, searching for the perfect meaning and rhyme. You know how to rhyme? Cat, mat. Let me get this. Cat. Hat. Just like cat in the hat. Yeah, that's alliteration. That's rhyming. The Wait, Daddy. I watched Cat in the Hat. Did you really? Was that good? Uh-huh. Right, I need to keep going. Okay. In the, the library at school. Okay, you watch it in the library. Uh-huh. All right, the handwritten speech finished, but not finished. Martin exhausted, surrendered to go to sleep. Everybody go to sleep. While at the same time up in Harlem in New York City on 125th Street in Chicago and Philadelphia, oh yeah, <gasps> Cleveland and Memphis crowds it cheered. It said Philadelphia. Yeah. Crowds cheered and friends and relatives what climbing on board charter buses and trains on foot and on plane singing. We shall overcome. Did you put okay? mm. Hoping for a peaceful day, the shining city on the Potomac awoke to armed soldiers paroling Constitution Avenue as if preparing for war against an invading army. Noon, women in, women in flowing white dresses, gentlemen in pressed white shirts and snazzy fedoras but carrying signs of protest, carrying signs of hope, walked past the reflecting pool, watching their reflections silhouetted against the bluest of pearl blue Daddy, skies. The wire are their mouths open? I think they're singing We Shall Overcome. We shall overcome. Um, that's why they're No, they're saying we shall overcome. Yeah, they're singing, that's why their mouths are open. Oh. Martin kept refining, painting with a preacher's fine brush, a light shade of wisdom here, a darker shade of frustration there, and the darkest shade of for whites only everywhere. You see, that's a lot of people, isn't it? There's a lot of people. Wait, what are they going to do? They came to hear him do his speech and uh, and hang out together. Introduce us. And the, Dad, what is this? That's the reflecting pool. That's downtown on the mall. Oh. That's the, we can go see that downtown. Introduce as the moral leader of our nation. Wait, is this a museum? It's kind of like a museum. It's called the Lincoln Memorial. Oh. We can go it's see that. like the Philadelphia Art Museum. It does kind of look like the Philadelphia Art Museum. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I noticed that too. You noticed that? Look, there's also people right there. Yeah, I think the people climbed all the way up there. How did they get up there? You know, I don't know. Maybe they had to climb with a ladder. Ready to lead the people to the promised land, he removed the photo. Oh, Daddy, I know where the ladder is. Is this yellow thing? Because they climbed up here and into that hole, and then they um like um um got on the roof maybe that's how they got up there they did that's good this thinking. is the way that guy that's good thinking is that right? part of the roof that is a part of the roof he removed the photo white sheet of paper from his pocket in his black suit the speech typed and finished but never finished and placed it flat onto the lectern whoa i think he's going to do his speech under the watchful marble eye of the 16th president, Abraham Lincoln, Martin's rich baritone, God's trombone rang out across the ages, gathering the glorious images of the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, and wrapping them around the writings of Langston Hughes. Daddy, look, I made a moon. A moon. A moon? That's a very good moon. <laughs> good job. Wrapping them around Langston Hughes, the Bible, as nose kind of red well that's just because maybe it was hot outside that's how it, the artist made him look oh. the bible spirituals learned he learned as a child adding a sense of emphasis replacing the word for clarity changes made in a moment to match the mood of the moment because he'd be like you have to do a speech in your school he's giving a speech the speech was good Wait, I have to do a speech. 
speech. Okay. So this is a story about So I can talk speech. to all the whatever. All your friends. No, it's, my friends aren't going to talk to. Who are you doing your speech for? Like your class? No, like in the off-school morning meeting. Oh, okay. Can I keep reading? The speech was good. The crowd applauded where it should, but Martin wanted more because he wanted to do a really good job in his speech. He paused, even when he couldn't say why. The, the others knew. Tell them about your dream, Martin. Mahalia Jackson, the queen of gospel, Martin's divine muse who inspired Martin as Martin inspired her. Her what was missing, the passion of Sunday morning sermon. <clears throat> Again, she shouted, tell them about the dream, Martin. Tell them about the dream. The Baptist preacher, son, grandson, and great-grandson of Baptist preachers carefully moved the script off to the side. Martin was done circling. The lecture was over. He was going to church. He placed... Wait, where's his, church? He's going to church like... As a, as a metaphor. Like, he's going to act like he's at church. The um, lecture was over. He was going to church. His place to land and taking a congregation of 250,000 along for the ride. He's getting ready to preach. Oh. Four words spoken many times in Chicago, Detroit, Birmingham, and Albany, Georgia, Wait, but never as the emotional. Brown peep, the black pe people. Okay, you want me to let you do that part? Okay, it's almost time for that part but never as emotional as on this day. Never intended to be heard on the day, not even written down for this day, not even once. I have huh? a dream. Oh yeah. No, okay, your turn to do it. I, I have a, I have a dream. Oh yeah, you did a good job doing that. I that's amazing. Good job, baby. Words he risked his life for and spent time in jail for to convince black America and white America that walking arm in arm was the only way to save America. Martin's voice soared as sweetly as Mahalia. Mahalia's from my country, tis of thee, to let freedom ring, concluding with the mighty crescendo, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last. Tears roll down like a mighty stream because the vision of the world where love triumphs over hate grabs hold of the heart and won't let go. This was the picture Martin painted. This was his gift, further proof of his greatness. But now is not the time for congratulations. There was one more stop to make. Whisk away to the White House, a house built for those enslaved, built by those enslaved to meet the 35th president, John F. Kennedy who had been slow to embrace the civil rights movement and tried to convince its leaders to cancel the march. Now I greeted those same men in the Oval Office, extending a handshake to all, but saving a special welcome for Martin. I have a dream. For some in the room, Kennedy's warm smile and handshake were bitter sweet. Returning to the Willard Hotel, where less than 24 hours earlier, voices were raised and fingers were pointed. The wise men gathered once again this time to celebrate and to reflect upon the day that was. Leader, you swept today, Reverend Abernathy told Martin. You preached today, John Lewis added. You was smoking. Clarence Jones had told... Wait, this is Martin. Yeah, that's him greeting his friends. Clarence Jones had told Martin moments after the speech, the words were so hot. They were just burning off the page like... Whoo. Yeah. Oh, my, oh, my sock ripped. Your, shop, your sock ripped? Is it uh -huh. okay? I'll just take it off. Just take it off. Okay. They all knew more battles lay ahead. Angry late night meetings in hotel lobbies. Frantic phone calls. <laughs> tears and blood to be shed. Fighting rich. <laughs> fighting every inch across a bridge to make Martin's Daddy, dream come true. Call. And those battles continue to be fought. But the, that night brought optimism and laughter, for they all agreed. Martin stepped up to the lectern and stepped down on the other side of history. That is the end.